So this is the second part of our lecture on general principles of orthopedic trauma. And we kind of tried to discuss everything about uh, general fracture principles, uh, how to understand uh, the geometry of the fracture, the mechanisms, fracture patterns, uh, etc., and some basic things. Uh, in, in this video, we'll focus a little bit more on um, the evaluation once you have a patient with a fracture. So evaluation obviously starts with a history, physical examination, and big part of your diagnostic tests are imaging, right? X-rays and related imaging to uh, assess your, first see if you have a fracture and confirm it and uh, then be able to look at all those things we talked about, um, about fracture patterns. So um, Frequently, the history is going to give a, some type of uh, story about there being trauma, uh, some kind of injury, but it could be atraumatic. So if you have a bone tumor, if you have abnormal bone, someone can come in with what otherwise seems to be a fracture, but there was no trauma. As a matter of fact, when that's the case, you then have to suspect maybe there was some type of pathologic process that allowed this fracture to to occur in the first place. So pain uh, goes without saying, but um, it's Im Im important that uh, you have to make sure that this is part of the history because it's almost always going to be part of the history when someone has a fracture. So you know, if someone doesn't have pain, you have to wonder, is it really a fracture? Um, uh, they should have pain at the location where they're concerned about and not just an overall generalized pain. We'll get into that in physical exam. Maybe they may have say they may have um, heard a crack or say something along those lines. Uh, and there should be some immediate disability that occurs with it so that they're fine or baseline uh, function and uh, uh, then suddenly there's uh, something happens and the, there's an immediate disability. So on physical examination, you want to start with inspection and uh, you want to look for deformity, look for swelling, ecchymosis. Uh, sometimes it's um, somewhat obvious if you literally have a bone sticking out of the skin. Um, and uh, an open fracture, you may see an open wound with a fracture associated with it. You also want to palpate. And uh, just like I said, the history should uh, tell you that there was pain or is pain. There should be tenderness localized to the fracture site. So the last slide showed a very obvious case. You don't need to look for tenderness. But if you have a patient that does not really have that much deformity, uh, maybe they have a non-displaced fracture, um, you would have to localize tenderness. So if they have tenderness directly over let's say, the lateral malleolus uh, rather than the lateral ankle ligaments, uh, you may suspect a fracture. All right, so um, there uh, can be instability, particularly in a displaced fracture. Uh, if the fracture is near a joint, there can be painful range of motion. Um, and even if the fracture is not, near a not that near a joint, a diaphyseal fracture can still lead to painful range of motion. Um, you may not palpate a pulse or it could be impaired, in which case you may have a real problem uh, on your hands um, if the fracture has also led to some kind of vascular compromise. Okay, and you may have uh, either a fair amount of swelling, not so much swelling, and uh, um, you should be able to get a sense by comparing to the contralateral limb as well. So physical exam should also include a detailed neurologic exam. Uh, you want to uh, check for sensation, both to light touch and two-point discrimination. You want to check reflexes, uh, muscle tone. Um, you want to assess for motor exam and grade their strength um, on a one to five scale. So the differential can include infection, joint dislocation, perhaps a sprain or strain, like the example I gave with the ankle, um, or a tumor. So any of these things can cause uh, bone and joint um, pain um, that you may have to sort out. So from an imaging perspective, um, 
plain radiographs are often sufficient uh, for many fractures, at least certainly in long bones. You want to get at least orthogonal views, that is like an AP and a lateral. Um, and typically for diaphyseal fractures, you also want to carefully look at a joint above and a joint below. Because, for instance, if you have an angulated fracture of the ulna, let's say in the forearm, uh, that can cause the radius to dislocate from the radio ulnar joint and the radio capitella joint at the elbow. Um, and you may not see that if you don't get a dedicated film or have a film that clearly includes a joint above and a joint below, meaning proximal and distal. So that's why we talk about that. Uh, in some instances, you may need a CT scan. Uh, and um, MRI or nuclear imaging can be helpful for occult fractures. And um, there's a separate you know, lecture and I believe workshop you're having on radiology, so I won't go into uh, this too much. Uh, and we'll go through some uh, case discussions in our in our live session. Uh, so we'll certainly get, go a lot into uh, uh, understanding and interpreting X-rays. But here you have a comminuted, uh, perhaps even segmental fracture of the tibia. There's a frac there's a fragment here. There's a sep there's another fragment here. There's another fragment here. There's a small fragment here. So it's very comminuted. And then you have the major distal fragment here. And then you can also see the fibula is sort of has a shadow underneath everything here. Here's the fibula. So um, so this is certainly a very displaced segmental comminuted uh, tibia and fibula fracture here. So CT scans uh, can be very helpful for assessing articular fractures. So for instance, in the hip joint here, um, you may not be able to get a very good sense of exactly where the fracture is, where is it located uh, with relation to the femoral head, how many fragments are there? Is there any impaction of the joint surface? So all these things can be very hard on plain films. And certain parts of the body, pelvis being one of them, uh, where you don't have long bones, but you sort of have these very unusual shaped um, uh, bones that uh, can be hard to assess on 2D plane imaging, CT scans can help. Uh, they can help for preoperative planning purposes. So if you're planning on fixing a fracture and you really need a good road map or visual of where all the fragments are, 3D and uh, 2D CT scans can um, give you a much better sense of what's going on. All right, so I'm actually going to pause here and um, we will get into uh, treatment uh, and treatment options uh, in the next video. Thank you.